It's an extraordinary story. At the age of 25, Canadian singer M. Griner was living the dream. She was a budding musician and touring as a backup singer for the wonderful David Bowie. Wow, but in the ensuing years, M lost herself to the demands of life and the music industry machine. We're thrilled to say that she joins us now all the way from Canada. Good morning or good afternoon or evening where you are, Em. How are you? <laughs> It's evening and it's great to see you. How are you? We're wonderful. Um, we want to, if we can, take you back to Glastonbury 2000 when you were performing on stage with the great David Bowie. Tell us about that time in your life. How do you reflect on that? Well, it was quite a time. I had just been dropped from a record deal. It was something that I had like, wished for my whole life. So I was sort of free to do anything I wanted. And I fell into this band, uh, not ever wanting to be a backing vocalist. And there, there I was. I found myself doing all the late night shows. And then we did Glastonbury, which was in front of 110,000 people. And um, to be quite honest, it was a rock and roll education. Mm. Uh, I tell you what, though, you are the envy of many, many people who grew up listening to Bowie, and, and he is a once-in-a-lifetime and generation artist. We, what was it like working with him? Was he close with the band? You know what? Well, you can see there <laughs> he oh was close. God. And you know what? It wasn't a thing where he was buddy-buddy on stage and then backstage he just did his own thing. He was very much... Um, in tune with what each member was doing. I remember playing him my songs. We'd have a laugh. Um, and I think it was just the greatest thing for me as a 25 year old to come out of a record deal, which was sort of like a tragedy. And then to see this fantastic person who is still really curious about music mm. when he was in his 50s. And it was a great like inspiration to me as someone who is sort of wandering around in the world, like that I could do this for a long time and I can do it the way that I want to. So that's that's what I learned from him. And he was so funny to be around and a little snobby, but in the best way. <laughs> a little snobby, okay. That's very cool to hear. How do you describe the energy on stage with David Bowie? Such an extraordinary performer. What did it feel like on stage with him? Yeah, that's a great question. It was it was amazing. At one time, it was just like friends, you know, because, you know, you make mistakes on stage, but it's rock and roll, and he would never get mad or anything like that. Uh, sometimes it'd feel otherworldly like when we were doing Life on Mars, for example. Yeah. Well, actually, I wasn't on that one. I was watching from the wings for that one. But when we did some of those real big songs, like Heroes, for example, um, <sighs> He just transformed, like he transformed from the dressing room to the to the stage. And I write about that in my book, just all the things I learned from him that you can really only glimpse as a as a band member. You know, mm. it was such a gift um, and I've I've continued to learn from him. Well, tell us about that. This book, The Healing Power of Singing, you talk about how watching a performance with him at Glastonbury was a bit like a wake up call for you. Explain that to us. Yeah, you know what? I was just in a really bad place in my life in around 2018. My marriage had ended. It wasn't really my choice. It wasn't really my choice. It wasn't my choice. And I laugh about it now, but it was a really devastating time. And I was still kind of um, grieving uh, Bowie's death and the deaths of other friends. Um, and I saw this concert because it was going to be released to the world. Um, and I had to sort of watch it to talk to the media. And I was afraid to watch it because I knew that I would see myself kind of in my joy and the things that had happened between Glastonbury and that viewing of the concert were, you know, getting married, having kids, all the things that you do in life. And I think it kind of just chipped away at my soul. And to see the concert, honestly, it was so inspirational and it's what made me write the book wow. which i will now flash across please the screen. do yeah. <laughs> well, in the in the book you talk about the power of finding your own voice what do you mm -hmm. want people to take away from that well i was a terrible singer when i was a kid so to go from that to touring with the legend um it's it's a sign that anyone can do it. Anyone can sing. It's just a case of like getting over uh, the messages you tell yourself and then learning the physical stuff that you have to learn to go with it. Um, so now I guide other people. 
Um, I coach people. It's kind of turned into life coaching, weirdly, because there's a link between the voice and our well-being. It, you know, it has to do with breath. It has to do with um, just showing up. You know, like um, I'm sure you guys know, you use your voices every day, and your voices become part of people's lives as well. So this whole thing of singing with David. And singing in my own life has been this huge treasure that I didn't really know existed until I looked at it closely. Mm, That's really God, powerful. Fascinating. Em, thank you so much for your time and sharing your stories today. We really do appreciate it. Thank you. I love being on the show. Bye. Come back when you got Come some music as well. Anytime. anytime. And look, we're going to flash the book up too. There it is, The Healing Power of Singing. It's on sale right now. What an awesome story. Right? Still mm. to come, Work Shake Up. If you